Okay, well, thank you for having me here today. I really appreciate being able to speak about medication safety. So, we'll just get right started. So the objective of my presentation today is to raise awareness for medication safety. So um, an important thing for you to know is that you are a major component in medication safety. You yourself as the patient and also as healthcare givers as we have a lot of those here today too. So I'm going to go over some safe medication practices and I will also talk about how working with your pharmacist is a great way to kind of prevent medication incidents from occurring and to improve medication safety. So first off, I just want to go over medication safety for those of you who might not know what it is. So why is medication safety important? So medication incidents can happen to anyone out there. And everyone has a role to play in preventing harm from medication incidents. So what is a medication incident? Some examples of those is um, your pres prescription bottle from the pharmacy contains the wrong medication. Another one could be you take the same medication twice in the same day by accident. Some other examples would be you are given too much of a medication while you are in the hospital, or you receive a medication that you know that you are actually allergic to. So where can medication incidents occur? These can happen at your doctor's office or your hospital when the medication is prescribed or given to you. It could happen at your pharmacy when a prescription is filled. And it could happen at your home when you're taking your medication if you were to take it at the wrong time or take too much of it on accident. So how can we help with patient safety? You are actually a key role to helping with medication safety, like I said before. So patients are the best source of information because you are actually the ones who are taking that medication. So you're the ones who have the most knowledge about it. So we always want to make sure that you know what you're doing and you are able to kind of give that information back to us. And I always want to make sure that my patients are always asking questions because if you don't know something, the most important thing to do is to ask questions so that you have the most information yourself. And to be involved in medication safety, there are many different ways to do that. So that's what I'm going to go over today. So the first thing that you can do is to keep a medication list. With a raise of hands, about how many people right now have a medication list of all their medications that they take, that they carry around? A pretty good amount, but it's very important to have this medication list. So a medication list should include what you are taking, um, how and when you are taking your medications, and why you are taking the medication. And remember that you are that best source, so when you're filling out your medication list, we have one attached to, the, um, to my slides today, otherwise there are some more outside. Um, it kind of goes through those different columns to have you write down each medication, because that way we can use it for furthering your health care. So the medication list should not only include those previous things, it should also include all the medications that you are taking, even if you only kind of take them as needed when you have, like, say, pain or a cough. Um, the things that we want you to include are prescription medications, so any medications that you get from your pharmacy or that are prescribed to you. A non-prescription medication, so that would be like over-the-counter medications that you might just go to a pharmacy or a supermarket and buy. And then vitamins, herbal supplements, and natural products that you might be using. An up-to-date medication list will help you yourself learn about your medications and it will help you so that you can take your medications correctly each day. It will also help your doctors, your nurses, and your pharmacists know what you are actually taking so that if they're going to prescribe something new or change your medications, that everyone's aware what is going on. And it also might help in an emergency. Say that someone was found unconscious and we weren't able to ask them these questions about what medications they are taking. If they have that medication list along with them, we're able to look at that medication list and kind of see what they've taken in the past and it might be able to help us further their health care and help the, us treat them. And another important thing is to update your medication list whenever a medication is changed. So if you ever go to the doctor's office and they decide to change one of your medications, we want you to update your medication list right away so that it's always up to date because that's going to help us out. It's also very important to know your medications. So when you pick up your prescriptions from the pharmacy or wherever you might go and get them, 
I want you to always check the name and always ask why you're taking that medication. You can also do that in the doctor's office as well. It's very important for you to know yourself why you are taking this medication. I get a lot of people in my pharmacy who come in and they say, oh, I'm getting this medication. And when I ask why they're taking it, they're not quite sure. And I always want to make sure that my patients know what they're taking and why they're taking it. So that's very important. The other thing is to make sure that your medications are always the same color and always the same size, that they look the same when you're picking them up from the pharmacy. Um, so if you get there and it doesn't look the same or you know maybe you're just a little confused on it, make sure that you ask questions. We definitely appreciate all those questions and we want to make sure that you're always getting the right thing every single time. And also I want to make sure that um, all patients ask about side effects. It's always an important question when I sit down with a patient and start talking to them about their medications. So if you have any questions or you're maybe noticing a side effect that might be happening, make sure you just ask someone, either your pharmacist or your physician or nurse, and then they can tell you if that might be a side effect of the medication. So um, many people when they go into the hospital, a lot of their medications will change. So the really important things that I want you to do is if you are ever in the hospital and you're going home from the hospital, I wanna make sure that you ask about what, or what medications are new and then ask what is this medication for, what are the side effects, and then how long do I need to take this medication. Also, just ask about any medications that might have changed. So the dose or the way that you're supposed to take that medication, if it's changed at all, you need to know that. And if there's any medications that you're supposed to be continuing or any medications that you should be stopping. So more tips to help improve patient safety is always use the same pharmacy. It's great when you um, are able to go to the same pharmacy, then they have that full list of medications that you're taking so that they're able to look at all of your medications and make sure that there aren't any interactions between the medications or maybe any duplications like taking the same medications. So that's always really important to go to the same place. Also ask your pharmacist how to take your medications. If you're having a question on how you're supposed to take your medication, make sure you ask that pharmacist. They'll be able to help you out with that. And always ask before you cut, crush, um, open a pill or a capsule at all, because a lot of medications aren't able to be crushed or to be cut or open the capsule at all. So it's always really important to ask before you do it, because sometimes it could be very dangerous if you're crushing it and you're not supposed to be. Some other tips to not share your medications. The medications were prescribed for you yourself, so they shouldn't be going to anyone else. It's really important because we're not sure what allergies patients might have to a different medication, or if that medication that you're giving them might interact with another one of their medications. So it's always really important to only take your own and to not share your medications. Also, not to share or reuse needles. A lot of people who are on insulin like to reuse their needles because they think it might be pretty expensive to get new ones. It's also, um, it's not very good to reuse those needles because they actually start to bend or get dull. So it's actually gonna hurt a little more when you use them. And it's not okay to reuse them or to wash them at all because that is um, just kind of opening up the chance for an infection. And always give your updated contact information to your pharmacy and your doctor's office. So if we um, go to try to call you because of some question we might have or some concern, if we don't have the right phone number and we're not able to get a hold of you, that's not gonna help anyone out. So just whenever you get a new phone number or change your address, make sure to let everyone know that. And also go through your closet every once in a while with your medications and check to see when those medications expire. If the medications are expired, usually it just means they might not work as well, but some medications become dangerous when they are expired, so it's always really important to get rid of those medications that are expired. So also, we want you to know your non-prescription medications as well. So those are those over-the-counter medications that we were talking about, or vitamins or um, supplements. So make sure that you're always telling your doctor and your pharmacist what medications you are taking that they might not have a record of because that's really important with interactions and to make sure that everything is safe to take together. So going into storing and disposing of your medications. So where should we store our medications? We should always store them securely, so have them in a cabinet or a closet that's away from children or pets because we do not want them to be able to get into those. Um, we also want it to be away from heat and moisture and light because that can um, 
kind of ruin some of the medications that you might be taking. So make sure that it's always away from all of those things. The place that I suggest is a hallway closet on like a top shelf so that it's away from the reach of children and pets, but then it's not in your bathroom because your bathroom when you take showers, it can get really moist in there. So we want to make sure that we keep it away from that as well. And we always want you to leave the medications in the prescription bottle that you get it in, or if you're going to use a pill box, that's completely fine as well. But we never want you to put all of your medications, say, in like one bottle where they're all sitting in there, because then it might be hard for you to tell which medications they are, or if anyone else were to help you with your medications, that wouldn't be easy for them to see. Um, so we always want you to keep them in those prescription bottles or in a pill box. So how to dispose of your medications. They had the medication drop off today. Um, there is also a list attached of medication drop off areas in this area, in the Milwaukee area for you. So drop off any unused or expired medications at those specific locations that I gave to you today. Otherwise, you can look online if you would like. Um, most police departments will take them as well, or you could just ask your pharmacist. They will be able to come up with a list for you. And if you're using needles to inject a medication, we always want to make sure that you have a sharps container. Um, if you're not able to access a sharps container, then if you could use like a laundry detergent container, something with very thick plastic so that the needles wouldn't be able to poke through. Um, so we always want you to put those in there to make sure that no one else gets poked by the needle and that it's safe for anyone who might be taking care of the garbage later on. Um, most Pharmacies will take back those sharps containers, um, otherwise police departments will as well. So that's something that if you're not quite sure where to take it, just ask your pharmacist. They'll be able to help you out with that. So another thing I wanted to talk about is medication incidents. So we always need to report if you think a medication incident occurred. So like I had said before, if you were um, went to a pharmacy and went to go pick up your medications and maybe it wasn't the right medication or it said a different patient's name on it, then I always want you to contact that pharmacy or wherever the medication incident occurred and let them know because um, that way they can kind of prevent that from happening in the future. So like I said, to inform the healthcare providers, if you don't feel comfortable going back to the pharmacy or where it occurred, then tell another healthcare provider about it because then they can reach out to them as well. Um, so also we uh, report the incidents as a, a healthcare system so that we can improve and get better ourselves. So that's why it's really important if anything were to happen to any of our patients or another coworker to let us know so that we can change it in the future and hopefully never have those incidents occur again. Another thing I wanted to talk about was adverse reactions. So an adverse drug reaction is actually more of a side effect that happens to a medication. So that's something that we couldn't really prevent because you took the medication and just perhaps in your body, you decide, or your body had that adverse reaction or the side effect. So that would be something like getting dizzy after taking a blood pressure medication. That's something that we can't prevent. A medication incident is something that we could prevent. So that's something that if we gave the wrong medication, we could have prevented that by giving you the right medication. So any adverse drug reactions can be reported. You can report it to your pharmacist or one of your healthcare providers, so your, um, your physician or your nurse. Um, and what we do is we can, uh, sorry, we can report those to the MedWatch. So that's monitored by the FDA so that we're able to give it to the FDA so that they can come out with that whole list of side effects that you usually get with your medications. So going a little more into the opioid related medication safety. So just kind of, I know they've talked about this, but just to be complete, so some opioid medication examples. So fentanyl, oxycodone, oxycodone with Tylenol, um, morphine, hydromorphone, hydrocodone with Tylenol, uh, methadone, and buprenorphine. So an opioid or overdose, in 2010, about 17,000 deaths were um, due to an overdose on prescription opioids. So 3,000 of those deaths were actually due to heroin. Non-fatal overdoses are several times more common than the fatal overdoses. And then in opioid overdose numbers, they're on the rise constantly, which is why we are having this today. So signs of an opioid overdose. If someone has lost consciousness, so they're not awake, you're not able to talk to them, they're not responding to you. So they're unresponsive. Um, they're awake, but maybe they're unable to talk or say anything back to you. Um, if they're slow, like having slow breathing or you notice that they're not breathing at all, or if they're having any choking sounds. 
Um, sometimes you can notice like a bluish or a gray color to their skin, um, also their fingernails and their lips. Or if you can check their pulse and you see that their, their pulse is very slow or maybe they don't have a pulse. So what to do in case of an opioid overdose? You're gonna call 911 right away. That's gonna be your first step. Go ahead, call them, let them know where you are and that you have a possible overdose. And then if you have Narcan, you're able to give it. Um, otherwise, when the emergency response team comes, they will be able to give that as well. And start CPR if the patient has stopped breathing or if they're very weak and you notice that they're not breathing very well or if you notice that they don't have a pulse. So this is best performed if someone has that training, but if you're able to do it, go ahead and do that because we want to save the patient. So what I wanted to talk to you guys about is Narcan. So this is also known as naloxone. I'm sure you've heard about it already, but this reverses the effects of an opioid overdose. So this is going to work right away and it's going to bring that patient back to life or bring them back so that they're breathing better and that their heart rate is started again. So the duration, so how long it's gonna work, it's gonna work 20 to 90 minutes. So um, that's why we always say that you need to call 911 right away because it's not going to last for a long time. There might be um, patients who need a second dose of it or they're gonna need some other care. So that's why we always want you to call 911 right away. Um, and I also wanted to point out that this is not gonna harm a patient who is not experienced an, open, an opioid overdose. So it's okay to give to someone if you're not sure what it is. If they're unresponsive and you have a feeling that it might be because of an opioid overdose, you can give it. If it wasn't because of that, it's not going to harm the patient. Um, so this is relatively inexpensive and you can actually buy it at pharmacies. Um, so I know the Aurora pharmacies, we do have it. It's available for purchase. Um, you can come in if you tell us that you need it. Um, you can tell us the patient that it might be for, or you know, if it's a family member that you're concerned about. Um, we can actually run it through insurance companies and most of insurances will cover it. So it's really nice in that effect. I had someone come in the other day, it was zero dollars. So, um, that's something that we can definitely do, try to run it through the insurance, see if it works, because it's better to have it than to not have it. And it's very easy to use, so um, it comes with the instructions, it's either a nasal spray, otherwise there can be the injection, we carry the nasal sprays. It's pretty easy to use, we can go through it with you, make sure that you feel comfortable if you were the person to have to use it, and then it comes with the instructions that are very easy. Yeah? And you can get it without a prescription? You can get it without a prescription, yes, very good question. Mm -hmm. So then I also kind of wanted to go over some other opioids, so fentanyl patches. Um, I know some people have some questions on this. We never want to cut a patch, a fentanyl patch, because if you cut it, that could be a chance for having an overdose, because the medication can come out faster than we want it to. Um, you never want to use a heating pad over a fentanyl patch. A lot of people will put the fentanyl patch on, they'll have some pain, and then they'll think, oh, I should use a heating pad. If you put that over the fentanyl patch, that's actually going to cause it to come out faster, and that's another chance to have an opioid overdose. And we also don't want you to ever place that patch over an open cut, an open sore, any open skin at all. We want to make sure the skin is, um, yes, go ahead. Ice is okay, the heat is the one that's actually gonna speed up the um, absorption of the medication. So just don't place it over any cuts or anything like that because that's where it could start absorbing into the skin a little faster. Um, for the disposal of it, what we want you to do is always remove the old patch before you put on a new patch. Um, that might seem like a simple thing, but we've seen some patients who have multiple patches on. The patch doesn't stop giving the medication as soon as that three days is up and before you put on that new medication. So we always want to make sure before you put on a new patch that you're always taking off that old patch beforehand. Once you take off the old patch, I want you to fold it up and put the sticky sides together. And then um, what we'll have you do is either put it in the garbage if you're not um, worried about like maybe kids or pets in the area, is if they start to chew on that medication or the patch, they could start to have signs of an overdose. Um, and also you can flush it down the toilet. Yeah, go ahead. Can I ask you a question about that? Of course, okay. yeah. Uh, I was under the impression Right. Is fentanyl a different beast? 
Well, the only reason that we say and that there has been things out there from the FDA that you can put it down the f or flush it down the toilet is because it is so dangerous if some were to, someone were to throw it in the garbage and they're worried about their children um, going in the garbage or a pet. So that's why they say that it's okay to do. I don't necessarily tell my patients to do it, but I know that it's something out there that you can do. I would prefer you put it in a safe spot that is away from anyone, and then once you're done with that, or you know you have a significant amount of them, you take it to one of those medication drop-offs so that they're able to get rid of it the proper way. Um, it's just one of those things that's out there by the FDA. They say that you can do it, but I don't really prefer it, because like you said, with the water system. Yeah, of course, great question. And then, like I had said before, keep it away from the pets and children because if they put it on their own skin because they think maybe it's a sticker or something like that, they're going to have some bad effects from it. And also, we don't want them to chew on it or cut it up or anything like that. So looking into some more of the opioid-related medication. So do not take any medication that is not your own. I said that before. So make sure that if it's a medication for yourself, you're not giving it to anyone else. And don't take anyone else's medication. Never change your own dose um, unless the provider tells you to. So if your doctor tells you to change your dose, that's completely fine, but never do it by yourself. If you think that you're having more pain and maybe you'll just take an extra tablet, that could have some serious harm to yourself, so we never want you to do that. Always ask your doctor if you're starting to have more pain. If you have a question about it, then maybe they'll be able to help you and work through that. And never mix your medications with alcohol. So a lot of the pain medications, if you have alcohol, that's gonna increase the effects of the pain medication, and that's when people start to have problems with breathing and having those signs of that overdose. So we wanna make sure that you're never having alcohol along with your pain medications, or any of your medications for that matter. Do not take any anti-anxiety medications along with your pain medications unless you're talking with your doctor first. So some anti-anxiety medications would be like Ativan or um, Clonopin, things like that. Um, those actually interact together and it will make those pain medications stronger so there could be a chance of having an overdose. So always make sure that your um, provider, your nurse or doctor is aware of it so that we make sure that you're safe. And always keep your medications locked up in a safe place, especially when we're dealing with pain medications. So if you have any pain medications, we always want to make sure that's in a place that no one else can get access to, like children or pets or anything like that. And always dispose of your unused medications. So there's a lot of resources out there right now for medication drop-off days. So we always want to make sure that we're actually utilizing those resources. And if you have some medications that you're no longer using anymore, say you had a surgery, you had some extra pain medications, take those in right away to that medication drop-off.